I'm very honored to introduce Dr. Takeichi, a keynote speaker of this meeting. And Dr. Takeichi received master's degrees from Nagoya University under the supervision of Dr. Eguchi. And you might think Dr. Takeichi has been a pure cell biologist, but actually at that time he was a bona fide embryologist. So he was studying the lens fiber differentiation induced by the factors released from the neural retina. And he re recapitulated this induction on the extra embryonic membrane of chicken embryos. And this study has been published in our journal DGD in 1970. So this is surprising. This is single author paper, of course, written in English written by graduate students. And he moved to Kyoto University together with Dr. Eguchi to join the laboratory of Dr. Tokindo Okada. And at that time, Dr. Okada's laboratory was one of the best place for in vitro cell culture. So he naturally incorporated cell culture technique to his differentiation project. But during that time, he happened to find that some factor in the culture media can inhibit the attachment of the cell to the substrate. And this is so beautiful. So his research interest shifted from the differentiation to the cell adhesion. But his original PhD project was cell differentiation. So he has to discuss with Dr. Tokindo Okada. But Dr. Okada, encouraged him to jump into this new project. And I think this is one of the important moments in the history of cell biology on cell adhesion because this experimental system is uh, one of the first example that enabled fine experimental dissection of the molecular mechanism of cell adhesion. And for this study, he got a PhD from Kyoto University, and his thesis can be downloaded from the library of Kyoto University homepage. So if you are interested in, please visit the homepage of the Kyoto University Library. And after that, Dr. Okada encouraged him to visit Carnegie Institute to join the laboratory of Dr. Pagano, who is an expert of the liposome biology. And his original project was to study to investigate the interaction between the liposome and the cell. But again, he happened to find something interesting with tryptin solution in his laboratory. And, and this is a very famous story. And people may say that this is serendipity, but I would rather say this is a promised opportunity for the people who have spent long, long time for culturing cells and who watch the cell un under the microscope very carefully. That is what he did. And getting this idea, he came back to Japan. And during the 1980s, he has published a number of papers which established the basis of the current understanding of the cadherin mediated cell adhesion that is calcium dependent, homophilic, and subtype specific adhesion. And during the 1990s, he had expanded the field of cadherin a lot and shows that cadherin can regulate the cancer cells and also can regulate the formation of the neural network. And in 2002, he moved to Riken Institute to become a director of the newly established center, Center for Developmental Biology. And he also had his own laboratory to continue his own research and contributed a lot for, to an understanding of the cytoplasmic regulation of cadherins, especially the connection between the cadherin and the tubulin mediated network. And I know I shouldn't talk too much, but I'd like to finish this introduction by telling you one episode when I was a good idea student. So when I started my experiment, the senior graduate student told me that don't show your samples to Dr. Takeichi before you take photo. So at that time, fluorescent dyes were not so good. 
So after long observation and long discussion, the signals were quickly uh, bleached out. So after long discussion with him, what we had was a big black hole at the center of the samples. That is why people said, don't show your sample to Dr. Takeichi before you take photo. So I really like this episode because it tells us how long he spent time with his graduate student and how he loved watching sample under the microscope and how we share the moment of discovery in the microscope room. So to me, he has been and will continue to be the best supervisor and mentor. And that will be also true for the people who have spent the time with him, especially in the microscope room in his laboratory. So I stop here and I stop sharing. And Dr. Takeuchi, could you share your presentation? Okay. <clears throat> Nakao-san, thank you very much for your very detailed and thoughtful introduction to me. Um, he remember than I, I do <laughs> what happened in, um, in the past. I actually forgot the thesis, but he digged out <laughs> that bad thesis. I was really amazed by looking at that one. Please do not visit Kyoto University Library. <laughs> it's a <laughs> terrible thesis. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> let me. So anyway, nowadays, Cereces adhesion molecules are well known, but young people may not have, may not know so much about how they are discovered. So today, in the first half of my talk, I would like to tell you how identify a cadmium adhesion molecule, then discuss some recent findings concerning the row, um, cell junctions. So I, I hope learning history is somehow beneficial for young people who are currently struggling to discover uh, something new. So now I want to share the slide. <coughs> Okay, now, why I got interested in cell cell adhesion problem? So I initially introduced the history of this field. Also, you might see it the textbook. I just did summarize that. Um, 1900, this is very early, 19, actually, 07 or so. H.B. Wilson found spongy can be isolated in single cells by mechanical ways. But surprisingly, these cells restore original body structures as, as shown in, in this slide. Maybe I should use another pointer such as this. Somewhere. I cannot changes anyway. And then later, Johannes Holtrater found vertebrate tissues also can be isolated single cell. This is actually amphibian embryo. He treated embryo with KCN and got single cell, but if you say he removed KCN, then reaggregated. So this is a very spontaneous process. So, so similar thing happened like uh, spongy. <clears throat> Further later, Aaron Moscona used chicken embryo or mouse embryos. And for example, he dissociated amino kidney with trypsin, gut single cell. Uh, this is the first um, data how uh, trypsin work to dissociate tissue into single cell. And then he cultured single cells and found they are reorganized, they aggregate, reorganize the kidney-like structures. So this is amazing, actually. And then much later in Japan, and Dan Shokawa uh, found 
this kind of uh, phenomenon using starfish embryos. She also succeeded dissociant embryo into single cells and then observed detailed process of re reconstruction's body, finding initially they were like random aggregate cell, but they next stage they show radial structure. And then embryo finds the uh, particular position make a dorsal ventral polarity and finally develop to normal looking embryos. Okay. So if experiment is very successful, this embryo went went to the real stuff issues. So from these observations, <laughs> now idea self-organizing tissues was born. This is still very uh, um, well known in, in, the, in the current tree. So we knew animal cells do know how to form a tissue, organ, and body. So if you study this kind of processes, you, you can understand at least in some part how animal body can be formed from the cell. But at this stage, people didn't know how cell cells adhere to each other. Even this bas basic prof problem was not known. <coughs> so then I got interested in cell cell adhesion molecules. But in initial stage of my work, as Nakao-san introduced me, I was not working in cell cell adhesion. My first subject to study in master course degree is that lens differentiation problem. In the eye, lens fiber becomes thick. And it is thought this lens differentiation is affected by some factors derived from neural retina. So I, as a young student, I sought to identify this factor release from neural retina. Uh, to, to identify this protein, what I did is um, I cultured retinal cells and lens epithelial cells. So I suppose some retinal cells, some produce molecules into the medium. This is called conditioned medium. And then I put this conditioned medium into lens cells and expecting lens cells respond somehow. To, to further differentiate. But actually, nothing happened for several months. And uh, even after moving to Okada's lab at this stage. But uh, when we observing behavior of, of these lens cells, I found something strange. <coughs> when cells plated in culture medium with fresh medium, Cells immediately attach to the culture dish, culture dishes, is a plastic or glass. But in the presence of conditioned medium, cells slowly and also depending on temperature adhere to the culture dishes. So I got some interest in this strange phenomenon and try to understand why this happened and eventually uh, found these kind of things. Without conditioned medium, cells directly attach to glass or plastic without any e e physiological conditions, including dibanic action and temperature and so on. So this is kind of physical ad ad adsorption process. But when conditioned medium is present, it contains protein. The whole protein is pre-coated on, on, to, on the plastic before cell attach. It's causing delay of attachment, also causing requirement of magnesium. Then also I found cell-cell adhesion require calcium, not, the, not magnesium. So through, through these observations, I got the impression cell adhesion mechanism is very complex multiple mechanisms appear to exist. So it looks very interesting. 
but um, I couldn't go further without no good technology to study further this question problem. So, but publish a couple of papers and uh, during this time somehow, so I couldn't go further. So maybe Professor Okada watching me and then, then recommended to go abroad. So I decided to Baltimore and it's Carnegie Institution, Washington, Department of Ambrosy. And, you know, to refresh myself and joined Dick Pagano's lab, it was 1974. He was studying interaction liposome cell. I thought this could be very interesting model for study cell cell adhesion because you know, cells are complicated, but for this is not simple. So if you use a simple things, you know, we could analyze more precisely how membrane membrane adhere to each other. So in that laboratory, um, I use Chinese hamster derived V79 cell, this kind of fibrous. They clusters like this and to study this kind of problem, I also needed to dissociate cell and disperse cells with trypsin. And generally, these disperse cells aggregate like this, as earlier pioneer people just this found. But uh, strangely, this never happened in, in Carnegie institutions. So I, I got interested why a cell cannot aggregate in Carnegie, but it, it does in Kyoto University. So uh, I tested many possibilities. I finally found recipe in the tryptian solution was different between in Kyoto and the Carnegie. <coughs> I prepared solution with calcium, magnesium, free serine. But the Carnegie tryptian solution, solution contained EDTA. This was only difference which I could find between uh, two, two environment. So I thought EDTA could be doing something. Therefore, to test the, uh, this possibility, I purposely prepared tryptian solution plus EDTA or plus calcium and finding the following. When cell treated trypsin EDTA, as I as, as explained, cell dissociate, but uh, never regulate any conditions unless cell recover something. But when cell treated trypsin plus calcium, we call it TC later, cell sep detach from as aggregate. But if calcium removed, by pipetting a cell in solution, then I can get uh, this single cell. But if added calcium again, this reaggregate something like this. So from this observ observation, I could immediately could model. model. <coughs> there should be cell cell adhesion between cell. This can be dissociated to trypsin, but uh, I mean digested with trypsin. But in the presence of calcium, calcium protect it, it and trypsin digestion somehow. But uh, if suppose this is calcium sensitive molecule, it's calcium removed, it de 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 deactivated. If calcium added, reactivated, get adhesion, this to adhesion. This is a simple model. So this molecule, trypsin plus calcium sensitive molecules. Okay, trypsin, okay. So I wanted to test this model. First approach was the following. If the protein protected by calcium present on the surface, um, I should detect difference in protein composition between calcium and EDTA condition like something like this. To see difference, I needed to label cell size protein specifically, because if I examine every protein, it's too many. 
So I, I compared cell side pro protein, this kind of very classical method. I wouldn't go into detail. But anyway, uh, this um, treatment label cell size protein only. And did auto radiography. And we, we repeated experiment many, many times, but the data was always negative, unfortunately. I waste almost half of a year, <coughs> but uh, I believe something should be here. So <coughs> I changed the some condition of this treatment. Finally, got some difference. If you carefully look at this range and this range, this is treatment classroom, which is EDTA, you find this band is more abundant here, but not here. Okay, so I thought this is what I am looking for and final more improved data is something else. You can make clearly difference here. <coughs> but uh, I had to come back to Japan after two years in Carnegie and I had to stop experiment here. And, uh, but next step was to prove this protein really adhesion molecules. The best experiment to test the role of this protein is to get antibody against this protein. If you have antibody, it, if antibody is good antibody, it's a kind of neutralized antibody, it is expected to inhibit cell cell, uh, uh, the function of these uh, hypothetical molecules, resulting in inhibition of cell adhesions. So I, but problem is difficult to purify this protein to get antibody against this positive protein. But to, there was a strategy to, to overcome this problem at that time. So people in, uh, immunize embryo, uh, animals with entire living cells. So then animals randomly produce antibody, cell type protein. Somehow animals like uh, um, antibody to, to raise antibody, um, antigen-like antibody. So, they, so anyway, you, you are lucky. This random the mixture antibody include antibody against cell adhesion. Because they might inhibit cell adhesion. Once you get such antibody, now you can identify adhesion more in, in, in foreign way. You fractionate cell size protein, like something like one, two, three, and mix the fraction with mixture antibody and try to neutralize you know, the antigen. And if such neutralized anti don't inhibit adhesion, it's, it's, it's not that, it, it, uh, it's success, not successful. But some fraction might in, um, new, absorb antibody and non-absorbed antibody now inhibit adhesion. So, sorry, I'm easy to inhibit, this is, you know, him, I'm confused. So if this absorption result in no inhibition, um, you can support this fraction is, is adhesion molecules. I, I hope you understand the strategy or, or although I'm confusing in interpretation. So anyway, I try to get antibody which can inhibit V917 adhesion by injecting v vitamin cell in, into rabbit, but uh, never, never get antibody which can inhibit their aggregations. So we cannot go proceed. <laughs> then while I'm getting negative data, I happen to read some paper by Rolf Kemmerer published in 1977. They show this kind of result. Antibody raised against teratocarcinoid feminine cells inhibit compaction of mouse embryo, something like this. 
you know, is mouse embryos uh, compacted, in which embryos shows very tight association. You cannot look at individual cells, but if antibody are added to this embryo, now you can see this ET plasmas. And same phenomenon was, it, it was known, same phenomenon was induced by calcium removal. And I, I compare morphology to things, and this is vitamin, vitamin cell aggregate plus calcium minus calcium. This is show adhesion like this, but this is very loose aggregate. So I thought we are looking at the same phenomenon. So I changed material from V79 to, to teratocosinoma cells. And this change was very good. Now I got antibody, uh, anti uh, antibody against teratocosinoma cell. And this antibody inhibit adhesion teratocosinoma cell, something like this. <coughs> Then I did Western blot. Of course, this antibody is, is recognized as multiple antigens. You get multiple bound, but look at this single cell bound, this bound. This is present only TC, but not T. So I got very similar result I found clear, um, as found that in ionization. <coughs> So from this finding, I finally got this bound, I got evidence this bound is involved in, in, in the adhesion. Um, so propose this kind of model, model there is molecules, it's in, in, in heat, in, in activate calcium removal and digest this protein and become plugged. It was 1982. And later, we also got monoclonal antibodies based and called ECCD1. And ECCD1 records like TC to itself, but need T to itself. So now we got conclusive evidence. Therefore, we named these molecules as cathohanes. Later, uh, Nagawa-san, who joined the laboratory, from cDNA, and he expressed this cDNA in L cells, which do not show strong adhesion, and found cDNA introduced cell cell adhesion, also protein locals between the between cell cell contact. And this is uh, conclusive evidence for, for that we are looking at uh, cell cell adhesion models. Then, <coughs> During these observations, we found something else. <laughs> when different cell line, like uh, F9, V79 is uh, mixed, in this case, one cell population labeled fluorescence, something like this, they do not mix. So this is V79, and this F9 is negative uh, F9, something like this. This is teratoconational you know, fibrous cells, they don't mix. So I thought similar molecules, but in cell type specific property should be present in the body. So I asked new student, Koei Hatta, to identify such molecules using brain cells. He screened monoclonal antibody, which interact TC treated brain, but not TT treated brain, and obtained a couple of monoclonal antibodies and tested specificity, tissue specificity, these molecule antibody, finding NCCD1, ECCD1 reactive liver, but not brain, and NCD2 reactive brain, but liver. So it, it, it's showed clear tissue specificity. So we suppose they must recognize similar molecules. Therefore, we renamed e e cadrain uh, as e cadrain and uh, ACTR target n cadrain okay? Later, another 
another third cardinal was also an, an identified, and we could um, get data of amino acid sequences, something like this. So they share amino acid sequences, confirming they organize molecular families. So naming was quite uh, correct. <coughs> then, further later, um, the experiment uh, done by any, any other places finally uh, found about 25 similar molecules present in the human body, like uh, E colony, M colony, M colony, or colony 6, 8. So, name something like this. And important property of coloring is they show the binding specificity. This is rather new data prepared in the Rutogashi COVID University. This is a transfectant of E coloring, N coloring, and with different color. And if you watch, E coloring positive cell, N coloring cell tells segregate from each other, although they initially attach to each other. So binding space is not very strict, but uh, they preference to interact the same, same colorants. And uh, if you could look at distribution of these colorants, it's very intriguing. E colorants distribute all epithelial cells, N coloring was present brain and lens tissues, and, and heart or muscle tissue, and so on. So, how how this happened during development? In gastrations, initially embryo express only E colorants, but when mesoderm differentiates from ectoderm, then start expression N colorant, something like that. So migrating mesoderm cells start N colorant. It is now well known E to N change correlate e EMT. So now people use N as a mesenchymal marker, but uh, this idea is um, originally based on this RE finding here. And also new relations. Um, <coughs> neural plate initially express E colon, but when neural plate formed, then gradually express endocrine. And also when, when neural crest form from dorsal region of neural plate, very complicated coloring shift change. This, this was studied by Shinichi Nakagawa, who is hosting uh, uh, this my talk. And in, in on the dorsal portions, in, in addition to endocardine, another coloring 6B express. And when neural crest leaves the neural uh, tube, it's, it's um, stop expand 6B, but instead it's in the seven. To test this change of express pattern coloring, Nakara-san says all by except coloring seven in dorsal portion of seven, uh, seven in dorsal portion of the tube, also non-functional coloring, dominant negative coloring. Interestingly, when Cadorhen 7 OBAX in a dorsal uh, neural tube, neural tube, neural crest cannot leave. Maybe because it trapped because tube cells also express 7. But also interestingly, when dominant negative Cadorhen express, neural crest also cannot migrate. This finding suggested, it's, this is very unexplaining, we should have done more experiment, but uh, so far. From this observation, we can at least um, propose cardiogenes type type switch important for cell segregation. Also, cardiogenes are required for cell migration itself. Okay, we got this kind of idea. <coughs> then, as you know, and with cardiogenes, some uh, um, functions removed in more adult developing or adult tissues, tissues disorganized. And uh, later studies uh, found um, this cardiogen a uh, conserved metazone from uh, spongy to bat batplet. In our laboratory, Odasan um, first identified Drosophila 
uh, Carl Heinz when he was student in my lab. So it's a uh, protein universally conserved in metazone, but, but not single animals or plant. Then I want to move the next step and um, how caffeine binds cell together. And also I emphasize in the uh, cytoplasm regulation of caffeine function. So caffeines interact in, um, by homophilic interactions at the uh, um, this domain. Extra domain divided in five domain called EC12, so on. Calcium binds hinge region of two domains, something like here, and uh, hold, um, making the structure is something, uh, something like this, current ratio bending structure. But homophilic interaction between colonies is not sufficient for cells very tightly. It, it, in the cytoplasmic domain, it binds protein called catenins, P, P120 beta alpha catenin. And alpha catenin further bind vinculin. And very important property, alpha catenin vinculins bind actin filament. And this complex, if you look at epithelial cells, this complex is localized in, in zonular adherens. It's also called adherens junction in most apical portion of cell, epithelial cell conduct. A sandwich is another than tight junction, this muscle. Although cadherin is present throughout cell contact, on this apical portion, this actin, uh, shows special, spe special organization. They form a ring like this. This is very unique structure, unique junction structure in epithelial cells. Fibroblast or other cells uh, organize different type of coloring acting organization. So this is kind of epithelial specific structures. And if you stain e coloring, um, Actin, you, you can get this kind of image. In adrenaline junction is lying, but you can see Cadrain in lateral portion right here. And uh, so what, what catenin actually doing? It's critical for Cadrain junction because if alpha catenin present, this is a case of Lankashina P C9, they dissociate completely into single cell. In the case of CACO2 cells, uh, they maintain cell cell contact, but junction is seriously disrupted. Then, so I told you uh, catenin catenin complex important general catenin function, but they have active role in morphogenesis, particularly in this kind of um, process morphogenesis. Epithelial folding. And this is popular for development of virus, so I wouldn't explain in detail. So, morphogenesis embryo, epithelial need to fold. For epithelial folding, this known um, phenomenon is apical constriction. Apical portion is constricted as something else, causing folding of seed. So how to make a constriction? It's a simple, because actin is present here, associated cadherins. Uh, if act actomycin is activated by rock kinase and uh, myosin, um, right, uh, regular actomycin right chain activation by phosphorylation, it's, it's constrict apical portion. This occurs, for example, on neural tube formation. So, I, and uh, actually, if you immunostain phosphorylated myosin to in in neural tube, you can see signals apical portion, suggesting this part is constricting. But uh, if low kinase inhibit um, inhibitor, now this signal disappear. Epithelial cannot fall. 
So this is known, but when we look looking at this phenomenon, I got interesting different phenomenon. Why neural tube bends only in medial lateral axis, but not anterior posterior axis? And we got this kind of in uh, question, try to understand, because in Shimura-san and postdoc in, in a lab, it's already taken, um, found very intriguing distribution, junctional acting cable, okay? And this is top view of bending neural tube of junctional acting. It's not even, it's concentrated somehow, but not concentrated in another portions. And concentration tend to orient it toward lateral medial axis. We thought this is kind of contraction acting, and actually it is the case. When we look at activated myosin line chains, it's overlap the condensed actions, something like this. Again, orientations is tend to toward modulated axis embryos. And this is actual movie. And uh, so the movie taken from this site. This is uh, um, GFP myosin light chains. We're taking a movie at this position. If we look at here, junctions condense, contract along this axis. But you cross this portion then extend along this axis. Okay. So it's embryo treated inhibitors, nothing happened. So we found this kind of force is acting. So we propose this force is bending the tube. But why? Why? Only medial lactis junction is contracted. It's another question, and found some some PCP factors. The cells are one. This is another kind like cadmium protein. Also localized like in this kind of pattern. Co-localized PPMC. So I have to skip many detailed experiment and we, uh, there is only conclusion. So cells are somehow activate low through popular PCP signaling pathway and contract cadmium associated protein at only this region. Therefore, um, my, 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 my uh, neural two and bend. We still don't know how PC, PC um, cells are one localized on the particular junctions. Then I want to move to the next uh, last portion of my talk. <coughs> now I want to, this is rather new data. And uh, what we, we found was cutting acting complex also important, epithelial epithel cell migration. And what I want to emphasize is cell junctions combated motile structures. Okay. <clears throat> you know, collective migration is very important in many different morphogenetic process, also for cancer invasions. So understand the mechanism very, uh, to, uh, collective migration is very important. And uh, Ozawa-san, who, who joined my laboratory quite recently, found this kind of phenomenon. He did wound hit, very classical wound healing assay of colon carcinoma derived DLL1 cells. They show very steady collective migration. But when alpha catenin removed from G cell, so it's disrupt cell cell junction. Now migration delayed. If you look at single cell, somehow these cells do not migrate at all. 
So this trace shows, they show cons, um, persistent direct movement, but uh, they are showing kind of random movement. So wound healing quite delayed. Why this happened? So we try to understand mechanism underlying this difference. So, so cell migration is, is depend on actin involved scenery. We look at actin behavior by transfect and life act. So this is another cell, cell like two cells. The single cells, single cells just do not migrate. After division, they still do not migrate. But after further division, when cell get my, uh, after surgeons now say cell have clustered and they start migrations. When, when alpha catenin knockout, behavior very similar to viral type, after division, still do not migrate. And then divide, divide, form multiple cell colonies. But as you saw in the previous slide, their migration is very slow. But the difference between wild type, it's alpha catenin KO cells, lamedipodia structures. Lamedipodia is very active even between cells here. So you can see this kind of cartoon. This can polarize cells has multiple only free edge. So leading cells somehow lead their migration toward this one. But this cell has no polarized lamellar polia, so they can't move persistently. But during this observation, we found something else. Even these cells form lamellar polia at, at cell cell contact, although they are not showing random migrations. So we got this, some protrusion called cryptic lamellar by previous authors. Now may you more clearly find this lamellar And we can make a cut on. When the wild types migrate, um, cryptic lamellar form at this region, but not consistently, sporadically. So we got interested in how this form, how this function for entire migrations. And to organize lamellar polia, what is known is actin polymer polymerization depend on wave complex and up to three. These are key molecules and actin network formation lamellar polia. So we thought this molecule could be also present at cell contact and finding this component, AB1, P3, uh, component on each complex both complex local cell cell contact also on edge of cryptic lamellar protrusion. Uh, this is a movie, this is a wave, an active movie. So this is junctions, and this is, so you can see wave acting complex come from junctions, okay? So we're moving this direction. And here, um, alpha cutting KO cells, there's no junctions. These complex locus only free lamellar edges. To test whether these cryptic lamellar protrusion are formed between cells to important for collective migration, we inhibit up to three or wave cranks by inhibitors or protein depletion, so on, so on. Find, for example, this is up to three inhibitor. So you see this is control. You can see cryptic body formed, but it's disappeared when up to three inhibitors. 
they, we mixed wild type cells with cells in which wave or up to C genes are depleted. And finding uh, these cells delayed in collective migration cell, suggesting uh, these protrusion and hypocrite element uh, important for entire cells migrate. So we can illustrate this cartoon. Up to three web complex local cells and junction, something like this. But somehow cells begin to migrate. This, act, this complex act become activated. It's form laminate portia like this. We also look at the effect of um, Inhibition up to C wave cross on E carbon uh, distribution. Finding if wave up to C inhibited, E can accumulate zero cell junction. This looks a normal junction. So this stationary junction and uh, moving junction is come somehow compatible. Okay? So if some, some, some stimuli come, this junction combating moving structures and it support a collective cell movement. Then, at how actually laminate portia free is always very active, but junction is not, not necessarily always active, it's sporadically appear. How this happen? So, to know this, we have many, many, we have done many trial experiments, <coughs> finally found when cell sheet stand for PPMC. In, in wild type cells, only marginal cells label, maybe because here cells spread and um, tensions increase, tension somehow activate myosin. So junction of myosin activate. <coughs> but internal portion is negative. But when the alpha cutting inactivate, entire layer shows PPMC. To test a lot of bus PP um, myosin activation, we treat cells with is brevistatin. This is myosin inhibitor. In treating, this friend cross restores the junction and also suppressing uh, creative remedy formation, which appear randomly in junction. Okay, so somehow myosin dependent junction is involved this cryptic lamina coordination. So this is summary of these observations. A normal junction like here, but if cell um, migration begin at the front edge, cell spread and also cell movement may pull the cell junction. Its pulling force might activate um, wave and up, up complex. In alpha cutting mutant cells, for unknown reason, myosin is always constitutively activated, and strong pulling force produced, so laminophobia is consistently organized. <coughs> I skip many data to interpret data, they are this model. If you're interested in uh, this, please go to original paper, which was published in this set by quite recently. So this is the end of my story, and uh, I just want to summarize. Is a complex rose coloring catenin action <coughs> complex in self orange tissues. Um, their primary role is the adhesion, but uh, they are also important active tissue morphogenesis. For that process, actin is play a role. <coughs> also, I saw in the my last five talk. It's modulate, if the junction is modulated, it's contribute collective cell migration. Also, I didn't mention anything else, but uh, it is known this junction play many other roles um, for tissue organization and function. Also, the important thing is carbonate issues is not the only addition mechanism. 
but the other, other junction, tight junction, this mosaic, many others also present in serious contacts, they should cooperate and regulate um, dish formation and function. It's very, very complicated. So this is the end of my story, and uh, I direct that thank many, many my laboratory mentors and collaborators at Kyoto University, Riken. I, I also hope you enjoyed some story behind my talk, something like this. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Takeichi. And uh, uh, we have a couple of questions. So if you have a question, please use the question and answer form. And um, Okay, so the first question is from Dr. Sugimura. And could you tell us what do you think about the mechanism by which pulling force is sensed upstream of the conversion from the stationary junction to the moving junction? So it's not clear, uh, but if you, I, if we observe cell sheet undergoing wound healing, front cells spread fast. Also, so spreading poor cell each other, so initiates some mechanical change. And mm. mechanical change somehow activate low and low kindness. But how mechanical change you know, activate some biochemical process is completely known. There are many molecules uh, which sensitive mechanical, chain, mechanical changes. For example, alpha catenin itself is it poor. It can be poor. It's, it changes in the morphology of alpha catenin and recruit binkling to itself. Something mechan mechanic mechanical force sensitive change in the molecules could be involved. But in the current phenomenon which I introduce you, we don't we don't have any any idea yet. Mm. Okay, so the next question is from Dr. Sato Umasan. And he is asking so the lamellipodia can generate the uh, force for migration in 2D fields two-dimensional field, but what happens if you look at the three-dimensional tissues, which may not have the basal tissue? Could you repeat that question so again? Probably the, my interpretation is the lamellipodia is a kind of the structure found in the two-dimensional culture dish. Yeah, but of in, course. But um, in vivo, the lamellipodia in vivo and three dimensional condition, of course, they have to move. Um, structures uh, like a lamellipoid should be formed, although they are not flat structure because three dimensional. But they need a protrusion to move. Mm. And uh, of course, what we found is flat cell plate. So we have to modify the model when we consider the three-dimensional phenomena, of course. Okay, so the last question is from Dr. Uemura, and he's asking if, if you knock out beta-catenin or P120, does it activate lamellipodia at circle junction? We don't know. Uh, of course, if any of knock down this, any of these disrupt cell cell junction, it should induce lamellipodia at cell cell cone zone. But uh, be remove beta catenin is generally not sufficient. If you remove beta catenin and pra um, placoglobin, you might get similar effect of like uh, alpha catenin removal. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we have not done that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the connection between the alpha catenin and the carriherin is important. So it's not, we are not looking at the sole role of alpha-catenin. 
So maybe the complex is important. As for caffeine yeah. itself cannot regulate the yeah. body formation. To get the perfect, to, to get the perfect evidence for that, uh, we have to do that experiment simultaneously. Mm. Otherwise, we cannot um, de um, remove the, exclude the possibility. It's uh, alpha and dependent phenomenon, right? Mm. Yeah. Actually, we we used e cation independent e cation knockout cell, mm, 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 mm. and uh, e cation knockout cells still keep junctions uh -huh. because there are other classical right. cations. Mm -hmm. But I see. nevertheless, myosin activated throughout. Mm. That means. This is not alpha cation removal signal, dependent mm -hmm. dependence phenomenon. E cation removal keeps the junction, still activate myosin to suggest junctional mechanical weakening. Mm -hmm. is, is an important factor. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now time is up. So. Thank Dr. I would like to thank Dr. Takeichi again for a wonderful talk and we really enjoyed the special lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>